The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis Book 3 Chapters 21 to 30 Chapter 21 That we must rest in God above all goods and gifts Above all things and in all things Thou shalt rest always in the Lord, O my soul For he himself is the eternal rest of the saints Grant me, most sweet and loving Jesus To rest in thee above every creature Above all health and beauty Above all glory and honour Above all power and dignity above all knowledge and skilfulness, above all riches and arts, above all joy and exultation, above all fame and praise, above all sweetness and consolation, above all hope and promise, above all merit and desire, above all gifts and rewards which thou canst give and pour forth, above all joy and tribulation which the mind is able to receive and feel, in a word, above angels and archangels, and all the army of heaven, above all things visible and invisible, and above everything which thou, O God, art not. For Thou, O Lord my God, art best above all things. Thou only art the Most High, Thou only the Almighty, Thou only the All-Sufficient and the Fullness of all things. Thou only All-Delightsome and the All-Comforting, Thou alone the Altogether Lovely and Altogether Loving, Thou alone the most exalted and most glorious above all things, in whom all things are and were and ever shall be, all together and all perfect. And thus it falleth short and is insufficient whatsoever thou givest to me without thyself, or whatsoever thou revealest or dost promise concerning thyself, while thou art not seen or fully possessed. Since verily my heart cannot truly rest, nor be entirely content, except it rest in thee, and go beyond all gifts and every creature. O my most beloved spouse, Jesus Christ, most holy lover of my soul, ruler of this whole creation, Who shall give me the wings of true liberty, that I may flee to thee and find rest? O when shall it be given me to be open, and to receive thee to the full, and to see how sweet thou art, O Lord my God? When shall I collect myself altogether in thee, that because of thy love I may not feel myself at all, but may know thee only, above every sense and pleasure, in measure not known to others. But now I oft-times groan, and bear my sad estate with sorrow, because many evils befall me in this vale of miseries which continually disturb, and fill me with sorrow, and encloud me, continually hinder and fill me with care, allure and entangle me, that I cannot have free access to thee, nor enjoy that sweet intercourse which is always near at hand to the blessed spirits. Let my deep sighing come before thee, and my manifold desolation on the earth. O Jesus, light of eternal glory, solace of the wandering soul, Before thee my mouth is without speech, and my silence speaketh to thee. How long will my Lord delay to come unto me? Let him come unto me, his poor and humble one, and make me glad. 
let him put forth his hand and deliver his holy one from every snare. Come, O oh come, for without thee shall be no joyful day or hour, for thou art my joy, and without thee is my table empty. I am miserable, and in a manner imprisoned and loaded with fetters, until thou refresh me by the light of thy presence, and give me liberty, and show thy loving countenance. Let others seek some other things instead of thee, whatsoever it shall please them, but for my part nothing else pleaseth or shall please, save thou, my God, my hope, my eternal salvation. I will not hold my peace, nor cease to implore, until thy grace return, and until thou speak to me within. Behold, here I am, behold, I come to thee, for thou didst call me. Thy tears and the longing of thy soul, thy humbleness and contrition of heart, have inclined me and brought me to thee. And I said, Lord, I have called upon thee, and I have longed to enjoy thee, being ready to reject everything for thy sake, for thou didst first move me to seek thee. Therefore blessed be thou, O Lord, who has wrought this good work upon thy servant, according to the multitude of thy mercy. What then hath thy servant to say in thy presence, save to humble himself greatly before thee, being always mindful of his own iniquity and vileness? For there is none like unto thee in all marvels of heaven and earth. Excellent are thy works, true are thy judgments, and by thy providence are all things governed. Therefore praise and glory be unto thee, O wisdom of the Father. Let my mouth and my soul and all created things praise and bless thee together. Chapter 22 Of the Recollection of God's Manifold Benefits Open, O Lord, my heart in thy law, and teach me to walk in the way of thy commandments. Grant me to understand thy will, and to be mindful of thy benefits, both general and special, with great reverence and diligent meditation, that thus I may be able worthily to give thee thanks. Yet I know and confess that I cannot render thee due praises for the least of thy mercies. I am less than the least of all the good things which thou gavest me, and when I consider thy majesty, my spirit faileth because of the greatness thereof. All things which we have in the soul and in the body, and whatsoever things we possess, whether outwardly or inwardly, naturally or supernaturally, are thy good gifts, and prove thee, from whom we have received them all, to be good, gentle, and kind. Although one receiveth many things, and another fewer, yet all are thine, and without thee not even the least thing can be possessed. He who hath received greater cannot boast that it is of his own merit, nor lift himself up above others, nor condemn those beneath him. For he is the greater and the better, who ascribeth least to himself, and in giving thanks is the humbler and more devout. And he who holdeth himself to be viler than all, and judgeth himself to be the more unworthy, is the apter for receiving greater things. But he who hath received fewer gifts ought not to be cast down, nor to take it amiss, nor to envy him who is richer, but rather ought he to look unto thee, 
and to greatly extol thy goodness. For thou pourest forth thy gifts so richly, so freely and largely, without respect of persons. All things come of thee, therefore in all things shalt thou be praised. Thou knowest what is best to be given to each, and why this man hath less and that more is not for us, but for thee to understand, for unto thee each man's deservings are fully known. Wherefore, O Lord God, I reckon it even a great benefit not to have many things, whence praise and glory may appear outwardly, and after the thought of men. For so it is that he who considereth his own poverty and vileness ought not only to draw therefrom no grief or sorrow or sadness of spirit, but rather comfort and cheerfulness, because thou, Lord, hast chosen the poor and humble, and those who are poor in this world, to be thy friends and acquaintance. So give all thine apostles witness whom thou hast made princes in all lands. Yet they had their conversation in this world blameless, so humble and meek, without any malice or deceit, that they even rejoiced to suffer rebukes for thy name's sake. Acts 5 verse 41 And what things the world hateth, they embraced with great joy. Therefore ought nothing so much to rejoice him who loveth thee and knoweth thy benefits, as thy will in him, and the good pleasure of thine eternal providence wherewith he ought to be so contented and comforted that he would as willingly be the least as any other would be the greatest, as peaceable and contented in the lowest as in the highest place, and as willingly held of small and low account and of no name or reputation as to be more honourable and greater in the world than others. For thy will and the love of thine honour ought to go before all things, and to please and comfort him more than all benefits that are given or may be given to himself. Chapter 23 Of Four Things Which Bring Great Peace My son, now will I teach thee the way of peace and of true liberty. Do, O my Lord, as thou sayest, for this is pleasing unto me to hear. Strive, my son, to do another's will rather than thine own. Choose always to have less rather than more. Seek always after the lowest place, and to be subject to all. Wish always, and pray, that the will of God will be fulfilled in thee. Behold, such a man as this entereth into the inheritance of peace and quietness. O my Lord, this thy short discourse hath in itself much of perfectness. It is short in words, but full of meaning, and abundant in fruit. For if it were possible that I should fully hope it, disturbance would not so easily arise within me. For as often as I feel myself disquieted and weighted down, I find myself to have gone back from this teaching. But thou, who art almighty and always lovest progress in the soul, vouchsafe more grace that I may be enabled to fulfil thy exhortation and work out my salvation. A Prayer Against Evil Thoughts O Lord my God, be not thou far from me, my God, haste thee to help me. Psalm 71, verse 12 
for many thoughts and great fears have risen up against me, afflicting my soul. How shall I pass through them unhurt? How shall I break through them? I, saith he, will go before thee, and make the crooked places straight. Isaiah 45, verse 2 I will open the prison doors, and reveal to thee the secret places. Do, Lord, as thou sayest, and let all evil thoughts fly away before thy face. This is my hope and my only comfort, to fly unto thee in all tribulation, to hope in thee, to call upon thee from my heart, and patiently wait for thy loving kindness. A Prayer for Enlightenment of the Mind Enlighten me, blessed Jesus, with the brightness of thy inner light, and cast forth all darkness from the habitation of my heart. Restrain my many wandering thoughts, and carry away the temptations which strive to do me hurt. Fight thou mightily for me, and drive forth the evil beasts, so call I alluring lusts, that peace may be within thy walls, and plenteousness of praise within thy palaces. Psalm 122, verse 7 Even in my pure conscience. Command thou the winds and the storms, say unto the sea, Be still, say unto the stormy wind, Hold thy peace, so shall there be a great calm. O send forth thy light and thy truth. Psalm 43, verse 3 That they may shine upon the earth, for I am but earth without form and void until thou give me light. Pour forth thy grace from above, water my heart with the dew of heaven. Give the waters of devotion to water the face of the earth, and cause it to bring forth good and perfect fruit. Lift up my mind, which is oppressed with the weight of sins, and raise my whole desire to heavenly things, that having tasted the sweetness of the happiness which is from above, it may take no pleasure in thinking of things of earth. Draw me, and deliver me from every unstable comfort of creatures, for no created thing is able to satisfy my desire and to give me comfort. Join me to thyself by the inseparable bond of love, for thou alone art sufficient to him that loveth thee, and without thee all things are vain toys. Chapter 24 Of Avoiding of Curious Inquiry into the Life of Another My son, be not curious, nor trouble thyself with vain cares. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. John 21 verse 12 For what is it to thee, whether a man be this or that? or say or do thus or thus. Thou hast no need to answer for others, but thou must give an answer for thyself. Why therefore dost thou entangle thyself? Behold, I know all men, and I behold all things which are done under the sun, and I know how it standeth with each one, what he thinketh, what he willeth, and to what end his thoughts reach. All things therefore are to be committed to me. Watch thyself in godly peace, and leave him who is unquiet, to be unquiet as he will. Whatsoever he shall do or say, shall come unto him, for he cannot deceive me. Trouble not thyself about the shadow of a great name, nor about the friendship of many, nor about the love of men towards thee. 
for these things beget distraction and great sorrows of heart. My word should speak freely unto thee, and I would reveal secrets, if only thou didst diligently look for my appearing, and didst open unto me the gates of thy heart. Be sober, and watch unto prayer. 1 Peter 4 verse 7 And humble thyself in all things. Chapter 25 wherein firm peace of heart and true profit consist. My son, I have said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. John 14, verse 27 All men desire peace, but all do not care for the things which belong unto true peace. My peace is with the humble and lowly in heart. Thy peace shall be in much patience. If thou heardest me, and didst follow my voice, thou shouldest enjoy much peace. What then shall I do, Lord? In everything, Take heed to thyself what thou doest, and what thou sayest, and direct all thy purpose to this, that thou please me alone, and desire or seek nothing apart from me. But, moreover, judge nothing rashly concerning the words or deeds of others, nor meddle with matters which are not committed to thee, and it may be that thou shalt be disturbed little or rarely. Yet never to feel any disquiet, nor to suffer any pain of heart or body, this belongeth not to the present life, but is the state of eternal rest. Therefore count not thyself to have found true peace, if thou hast felt no grief nor that then all is well if thou hast no adversary, nor that this is perfect if all things fall out according to thy desire, nor then reckon thyself to be anything great, or think that thou art especially beloved if thou art in a state of great fervour and sweetness of spirit. For not by these things is the true lover of virtue known nor in them doth the profit and perfection of man consist. In what then, Lord? In offering thyself with all thy heart to the divine will, in not seeking the things which are thine own, whether great or small, whether temporal or eternal, so that thou remain with the same steady countenance in giving of thanks between prosperity and adversity, weighing all things in an equal balance. If thou be so brave and long-suffering in hope that when inward comfort is taken from thee, thou even prepare thy heart for the more endurance and justify not thyself, as though thou oughtest not to suffer these heavy things, but dost justify me in all things that I appoint, and dost bless my holy name, then dost thou walk in the true and right way of peace, and shall have a sure hope that thou shalt again behold my face with joy. For if thou come to an utter contempt of thyself, know that then, thou shalt enjoy abundance of peace, as much as is possible where thou art but a wayfaring man. Chapter 26 Of the exaltation of a free spirit, which humble prayer more deserveth than doth frequent reading. Lord, this is the work of a perfect man, never to slacken his mind from attention to heavenly things, and among many cares to pass along as it were without care, not after the manner of one indifferent, but rather with the privilege of a free mind, 
cleaving to no creature with inordinate affection. I beseech thee, my most merciful Lord God, preserve me from the cares of this life, lest I become too much entangled, from many necessities of the body, lest I be taken captive by pleasure, from all obstacles of the spirit, lest I be broken and cast down with cares. I say not from those things which the vanity of the world goeth about after with all eagerness, but from those miseries which by the universal curse of mortality weigh down and hold back the soul of thy servant in punishment, that it cannot enter into liberty of spirit so often as it would. O my God, sweetness unspeakable, turn into bitterness all my fleshly consolation, which draweth me away from the love of eternal things, and wickedly allureth towards itself, by setting before me some present delight. Let not, O my God, let not flesh and blood prevail over me, let not the world and its short glory deceive me, let not the devil and his craftiness supplant me. Give me courage to resist, patience to endure, constancy to persevere. Grant, in place of all consolations of the world, the most sweet unction of thy spirit, and in place of carnal love, pour into me the love of thy name. Behold, food and drink and clothing and all the other things appertaining to the support of the body are burdensome to the devout spirit. Grant that I may use such things with moderation and that I be not entangled with inordinate affection for them. To cast away all these things is not lawful because nature must be sustained but to require superfluities and things which merely minister delight, the holy law forbiddeth. For otherwise the flesh would wax insolent against the spirit. In all these things I beseech thee, let thy hand guide and teach me, that I in no way exceed. Chapter 27 that personal love greatly hindereth from the highest good. My son, thou must give all for all, and be nothing of thine own. Know thou that the love of thyself is more hurtful to thee than anything in the world. According to the love and inclination which thou hast, everything more or less cleaveth to thee. If thy love be pure, sincere, well regulated, thou shalt not be in captivity to anything. Do not covet what thou mayest not have. Do not have what is able to hinder thee, and to rob thee of inward liberty. It is wonderful that thou committest not thyself to me from the very bottom of thy heart with all things which thou canst desire or have. Why art thou consumed with vain sorrow? Why art thou wearied with superfluous cares? Stand thou by my good pleasure, and thou shalt suffer no loss. If thou seekest after this or that, and wilt be here or there, according to thine own advantage, or the fulfilling of thine own pleasure, thou shalt never be in quiet, nor free from care, because in everything somewhat will be found lacking, and everywhere there will be somebody who opposeth thee. Therefore it is not gaining or multiplying of this thing or that which advantageth thee, but rather the despising it and cutting it by the root out of thy heart, which thou must not only understand of money and riches, but of the desire after honour and vain praise, 
things which all pass away with the world. The place availeth little, if the spirit of devotion is wanting. Nor shall that peace stand long which is sought from abroad, if the state of thy heart is without the true foundation, that is, if it abideth not in me. Thou mayest change, but thou canst not better thyself. For when occasion ariseth, and is accepted, thou shalt find what thou didst fly from, yea, more. A prayer for cleansing of the heart and for heavenly wisdom. Strengthen me, O God, by the grace of thy Holy Spirit. Give me virtue to be strengthened with might in the inner man, and to free my heart from all fruitless care and trouble, and that I be not drawn away by various desires after any things whatsoever, whether of little value or great, but that I may look upon all as passing away, and myself as passing away with them, because there is no profit unto the sun, and all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 11 O oh, how wise is he that considereth thus! Give me, O Lord, heavenly wisdom, that I may learn to seek Thee above all things, and to find Thee, to relish Thee above all things, and to love Thee, and to understand all other things, even as they are, according to the order of Thy wisdom. Grant me prudently to avoid the flatterer, and patiently to bear with him that opposeth me. For this is great wisdom, not to be carried by every wind of words, nor to give ear to the wicked flattering siren. For thus do we go safely on in the way we have begun. Chapter 28 Against the Tongues of Detractors My son, Take it not sadly to heart, if any think ill of thee, and say of thee what thou art unwilling to hear. Thou oughtest to think worse of thyself, and to believe no man weaker than thyself. If thou walkest inwardly, thou wilt not weigh flying words above their value. It is no small prudence to keep silence in an evil time, and to turn inwardly unto me, and not to be troubled by human judgment. Let not thy peace depend upon the word of men, for whether they judge well or ill of thee, thou art not therefore any other man than thyself. Where is true peace or true glory? Is it not in me? And he who seeketh not to please men, nor feareth to displease, shall enjoy abundant peace. From inordinate love and vain fear ariseth all disquietude of heart, and all distraction of the senses. Chapter 29 How when tribulation cometh we must call upon and bless God. Blessed be thy name, O Lord, for evermore, who hast willed this temptation and trouble to come upon me. I cannot escape it, but have need to flee unto thee, that thou mayest succour me, and turn it unto me for good. Lord, now am I in tribulation, and it is not well within my heart, but I am sore vexed by the suffering which lieth upon me. And now, O dear Father, what shall I say? I am taken among the snares. Save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. John 12, verse 27 That thou mightest be glorified when I am deeply humbled, and am delivered through thee. 
Let it be thy pleasure to deliver me. Psalm 40, verse 16 For what can I do, who am poor, and without thee whither shall I go? Give patience this time also. Help me, O Lord my God, and I will not fear how much soever I be weighed down. And now, amid these things, what shall I say? Lord, thy will be done. I have well deserved to be troubled and weighed down. Therefore I ought to bear, would that it be with patience, until the tempest be overpassed and comfort return. Yet is thine omnipotent arm able also to take this temptation away from me, and to lessen its power that I fall not utterly under it, even as many a time past thou hast helped me, O God, my merciful God. And as much as this deliverance is difficult to me, so much is it easy to thee, O right hand of the Most Highest. Chapter 30 Of Seeking Divine Help and the confidence of obtaining grace. My Son, I, the Lord, am a stronghold in the day of trouble. Nahum 1 verse 7 Come unto me, when it is not well with thee. This it is which chiefly hindereth heavenly consolation, that thou too slowly betakest thyself unto prayer, for before thou earnestly seekest unto me, thou dost first seek after many means of comfort, and refreshest thyself in outward things. So it cometh to pass that all things profit thee but little, until thou learn that it is I who deliver those who trust in me. Neither beside me is there any strong help, nor profitable counsel, nor enduring remedy. But now, recovering courage after the tempest, grow thou strong in the light of my mercies, for I am nigh, saith the Lord, that I may restore all things not only as they were at the first, but also abundantly, and one upon another. For is anything too hard for me, or shall I be like unto one who saith and doeth not? Where is thy faith? Stand fast and with perseverance. Be long-suffering and strong. Consolation will come unto thee in its due season. Wait for me, yea, wait. I will come and heal thee. It is temptation which vexeth thee, and a vain fear which terrifieth thee. What doth care about future events bring thee, save sorrow upon sorrow? Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. Matthew 6 verse 34 It is vain and useless to be disturbed or lifted up about future things which perhaps will never come. But it is the nature of man to be deceived by fancies of this sort, and it is a sign of a mind which is still weak to be so easily drawn away at the suggestion of the enemy. For he careth not whether he deceive and beguile by true means or false, whether he throw thee down by the love of the present or fear of the future. Therefore let not thy heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Believe in me, and put thy trust in my mercy. John 14 verse 27, Psalm 13 verse 5 When thou thinkest thyself far removed from me, I am often the nearer. When thou reckonest that almost all is lost, then often is greater opportunity of gain at hand. All is not lost when something goeth contrary to thy wishes. Thou oughtest not to judge according to present feeling, 
nor so to take or give way to any grief which befalleth thee, as if all hope of escape were taken away. Think not thyself totally abandoned, although for the time I have sent to thee some tribulation, or have even withdrawn some cherished consolation. For this is the way to the kingdom of heaven, and without doubt it is better for thee and for all my other servants that ye should be proved by adversities than that ye should have all things as ye would. I know thy hidden thoughts, and that it is very needful for thy soul's health that sometimes thou be left without relish, lest perchance thou be lifted up by prosperity and desirous to please thyself in that which thou art not. What I have given I am able to take away, and to restore again at my good pleasure. When I shall have given, it is mine. When I shall have taken away, I have not taken what is thine, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from me. James 1 verse 17 If I shall have sent upon thee grief or any vexation, be not angry, nor let thy heart be sad. I am able quickly to lift thee up, and to change every burden into joy. For I am just and greatly to be praised when I do thus unto thee. If thou rightly consider and look upon it with truth, thou oughtest never to be so sadly cast down because of adversity, but rather shouldst rejoice and give thanks, yea, verily to count it the highest joy that I afflict thee with sorrows and spare thee not. As my Father hath loved me, so love I you. John 15 verse 9 Thus have I spoken unto my beloved disciples, whom I sent forth not unto worldly joys, but to great strivings, not unto honours, but unto contempt, not unto ease, but to labours, not unto rest, but to bring forth much fruit with patience. My son, remember these words. End of chapter 30